Okay, what we're working on today is net ionic equations, and before we get there, you should try and understand a few things. This is H2O, and it's a liquid. This is a aluminum metal pop tab, and it's a solid. So that's aluminum metal pop tab, and it's solid. If I put that in the liquid, it'll just sink to the bottom, and it won't do anything. This is NaCl solid, that's salt. If I put it into water, it's going to break down into its ions. So now what we do is we call this NaCl aqueous. So aqueous means something that dissolves in water when we put it in water. With that background information, Let's try something that's got a number of steps. So what you have to do is you have to break the steps down. So I'm going to do three examples. <coughs> it's taking into account some stuff we did in unit one. Let's see what we can do. First of all, you're going to have one of two types of reactions. You're going to have a single displacement, which has a single element and a molecule, single element and a molecule, or you're going to have double displacement, which is going to be a molecule and a molecule. How do you recognize the molecule? It's got more than one type of capital letter in it. Okay, so in a single displacement, if it's a metal, something to the left-hand side of the stepladder going down your periodic table, if it's to the left, if it's a metal, if it's to the right, it's a non-metal. If it's a metal, it's going to kick the metal out of the compound. If this was a non-metal, it would kick the non-metal out. So these two switch places. Don't write any numbers in yet. If it's a solid on its own, or if it's an element on its own, it's just going to be a solid. If it's a molecule, you got to go to the crossover numbers. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. So for magnesium, the crossover number is two. For chlorine, the crossover number is one. We cross them over and it becomes MgCl2. Now we have to balance. This is a tricky balancing because we've got an odd number on one side and an even number on the other side. So I always say double the odd number. So put a two out front, that's six chlorines. Now how do I get six over here? I put a three. Three MGs, three MGs, two FEs, two FEs. Next step, we learned that aqueous things will break down in solution. So what we have to do is we have to break our aqueous things down. So nothing changes for our solids, we just leave them. We've got two Fe's. Now you get your charge from the opposite element. So the three here will go up here. If it's a metal, if it comes first in the name, in other words, it will get a positive charge. How many chlorines do we have? We have two times three is six. What's the charge on the chlorine? You take the number that's down here, which is assumed to be one, you bring it up and you make it negative. Let's go to the other side. This is a solid, so we leave it. We have three MGs with a two plus charge. Remember, the reason this is happening is we're dropping a salt in water and it's breaking down. We've got six CLs with a one negative charge. Where'd the one come from? From the Mg, it's a reverse crossover. The Cl's cross out, and we're left with what's called a net ionic equation. The 3Mg plus the 2Fe gives the 2Fe and the 3Mg. Let's try our second one. <coughs> the metal kicks the metal out. That'll be a solid because it's on its own. Then we write down the two things that go together. Then we look up their crossover numbers. 
If you don't know the crossover number of a polyatomic, just say what's the crossover number, just Google it. What's the crossover number for OH, which is hydroxide? Mg was 2, the 2 comes down. Let's balance it. 2OH, 2OH, 2K, 2K, Mg stays the same. Now, I want to look something up here. I want to look up the Mg and the OH. Here's something interesting. You got to have your solubility tables handy when this happens. When the Mg and the OH come together, they're insoluble. So if Mg and OH don't break down, we can't break this down. So we just say no reaction or no precipitate. We should say no precipitate. So we don't take this any further. So when you do this, you always have to look up the substance that you think might be aqueous. So let's look up MgCl2. There's Mg, there's Cl, it's soluble. So it will break down in solution so we can proceed. But if the thing that you make over here, the molecule you will make over here says insoluble, you can't go any further. If it did say soluble, you would change that AQ to an S and you would leave it, you'd be done. You wouldn't do these next steps. So the MgOH2 was insoluble. So we put an S beside it instead of an AQ because it doesn't dissolve in solution. So we just leave it. Let's try a double displacement reaction. Same thing, the two metals change places. Okay, don't put any numbers in. It's K and BR and it's Li and it's PO4, which is phosphate. Now go to the periodic table to look up everything's crossover numbers. You'd see that K is a 1 and BR is a 1. Leave it. You'd see Li is a 1. If you look up PO4's crossover number, they'll say it's a 3. So the 3 comes down here. It's Li3PO4. Now balance. 3Li, 3Li, 3Br, 3Br, 3K, 3K, PO4, PO4. Now we see if these things are going to break down in solution. So let's look up Li and PO4. They are insoluble, so they'll remain a solid. Let's look up K and Br. They are soluble. So here's what we have to do. <coughs> Everything on here is now soluble. You've got three Li's, plus you've got three Br's. If you do crossover numbers, reverse crossover numbers, the first thing's always positive, the second is negative. You've got three K's, you've got one PO4, charges, three negative, one positive. On this side, we ignore this because it doesn't change. We've got three Ks. Uh, I made a mistake there. Nope, I didn't. That's right. Plus three BRs. And we do the reverse crossover, one plus and one negative. If we have something on the right, and we have something on the left, we can cross it out. So we have 3Li1 plus plus PO4, 3 negative, gives us this Li3PO4. It would remain solid aqueous, aqueous.
Folks, I'm not saying this is easy. It should take you a couple of times to get through this. Um, take your time. Watch the video until you get it. Ask questions. I'll take up the five that are there and then you will have an assignment on this.